Okay, I'm um, getting ready to start cheesecake. I want to show you this little thing here. I'm adding this into the video at the beginning. Uh, first thing I do with the springform pan is, is I put a piece of baking paper on the bottom of it and then I close it on the paper. Then I go around with the scissors and trim it off except for a little tab. That tab will let me pull the cake when it's done off the pan onto a plate and then I can cut off the rest of the paper and nobody knows that the that the um, cake is sitting on top of a nice paper and it protects the plate as well. Alright, on to the next step. Oh, and there's the five blocks of cheese of the cream cheese ready to go. Okay, we're back. Time for part two of cheesecake. I know the light is not that good. Um, I actually have a light strapped to my head to try to cast some more light, but it's not shining directly on anything. Uh, anyway, so there's my recipe. Oh, so bad you can't read it. Maybe I'll post it. We'll see. I got some flour. We need a little of that and some sugar. Let me just go through the recipe real quick. The crust is actually two cups of ground Teddy Grahams, these. And I grind that in this little mini food processor. See, I got my Big Daddy KitchenAid there. I'd be lost without that. Thing so awesome. And before, I used to make cheesecake by hand, whipping it by hand. Um, now I'm spoiled. So I got my butter. The crust is also going to have three quarters of a stick of butter melted into the Teddy Grahams with just a couple of tablespoons of sugar to get it going. After I make that, then I make the filling. The filling comprises of these five blocks of cream cheese that have been sitting out for a while getting up to room temperature. Those are going to go in the big mixer and I'm going to mix in one and a third cups of sugar. The next thing is the after that's beat up a little bit because uh, the more you beat it the more air it's going to add and it comes out really big which I kind of like my big cheesecakes that are real puffy and real light uh, but also rich and, and good the uh, next thing is three tablespoons of flour that goes into the mix then I put in the eggs one at a time three large eggs and then I put in the sour cream which is half a cup of sour cream mix that all together until it's nice and creamy um, by this time oh almost missed it there there's one and a half, uh, half teaspoon of vanilla so the oven's preheated to 325 and there you go adjust light it's ready to go this crust will go in there for 10 minutes and it'll kind of bake and I, the whole family just left to go shopping so it's great because any kind of movement or loud noises or heavy walking will cause the crust to fall and that's not cool so I bake it for 10 minutes and I take it out and it cools a little bit then it's time to pour the filling in and then it goes into the 325 degree oven for one hour and 15 minutes after that it's put it in the fridge let it cool down so I have a cake container over there and I'll this cake on top of it because it's Thanksgiving time and bread all around it um, that's where I'm gonna put my cheesecake put it inside there to kind of protect it from anything and it'll go into one of my crisper drawers there will be some condensation because it'll be warm but I prefer to have it a quick cool because then this tomorrow will slide right off so easy and just come right off and I'll leave the bottom section in there until we're ready to eat it and this time I'm not putting a chocolate crust on the top but if you wanted to you could melt um, eight ounces of semi-sweet melted chocolate or yeah you could melt baking chocolate semi-sweet you melt that on the stove mix in two tablespoons of butter then at the end of your mixing process mix it in with your mix let it beat and you will have the most delicious chocolate cheesecake which 
I may throw in a picture of the chocolate cheesecake that I already made this week for Thanksgiving. So, on to the next part, and I'll pop in with some more footage then. Okay. I've taken the um, crumbs and chopped them up, and... That's too much light. The I've taken the crumbs and chopped them up. Hang on, we'll do that over. So I've taken the crumbs and chopped them up, and then um, there. This is why they need to be mixed with the appropriate amount of butter. See how that sticks together like that? That's going in there. Here's another tip. See this tool right here? Best tool labor. A ever, ever. It's the tablespoon measure and it can also be used as a melon baller. This here I got a long time ago back when I used to drink. Let's not look at the Budweiser there. This glass is flat sided with a very slight taper and has a very flat bottom on it. We're going to use that in here to tamp our sides up and I'll use that tool and it'll make the sides perfectly even and they'll have a slight angle to them so they'll be a little denser at the bottom than they are at the top to come out with a perfect crust alright the cream cheese is there I'm not turning it on because it's loud once this goes in the oven I'll mix that up when you have the leftover cream cheese here's what you do <laughs> you just spread it onto a piece of celery and you snack on that while you're cooking Alrighty, on to the next phase. Let's see if I can film this in action. So, probably not. <laughs> I'm happy about my helpers being gone, but as you can see, this tamps it in, and what we get is nice even sides on our crust because we use this glass to tamp it in all nice. Alright, next phase. Here's a quick look. It's the low light condition is probably spinning so fast you can't see it. But um so nice and whipped that is as adding ingredients I let it go they say like two to three minutes I let it go five or six because it's adding air it's getting fluffiness it's really ready to go I'm going to scrape it down one more time and then in um, less than two minutes the crust will come out and I'll put it in and bake it done well almost done here's the crust all toasty I'm going to put it on this pan in case there's overflow, which I doubt. But it also makes it easier to take uh, the cake in and out of the oven. And just gives it all around it's a good idea to put it on a pan. On the next. Oh, wait. There's more. Ah. Look how creamy that is. Hmm. Creamy goodness. All right. On the next phase. Okay, look at that. Now it's in the crust. So now we just get it to where it starts to flow out. Because when I put this in the oven, it's going to flow out on its own. This sometimes people think prevents cracking to have it all piled up like this, but you know what? I don't really care about cracks because uh, it still comes out awesome cheesecake. And that's that. Next is the oven, hour and 15 minutes. We'll see how it looks when it comes out. Okay, here we are. This wraps up the video. This is the cheesecake just out of the oven. You can see it's got some cracks. It's gonna fall. It'll be a little cracky on top, but it's gonna be thick and rich and tasty. So there you go, real easy to make cheesecake. Better than Chicago style, 
better than New York style, better than Cheesecake Factory. You can do it. And there's the beast over there talking back. Alright, thanks for watching my videos. Make sure you subscribe.